Kent, we've spent today in uh, Central Interior, west of Quinell, British Columbia, and uh, one of the things that strikes me, that really hits me in this landscape is all the dead trees that go on out to the horizon. So we're standing in the midst of a large scale uh, change in the landscape and uh, an ecological change, possibly linked to global warming and human activities. Uh, do you want to give us a bit of a sense of how that relates to the soils and the processes here that were, were active in this forest and now are going to be changed? The first thing that's going to happen here with all the dead trees is the increase in the litter fall. The forest floor here is about six centimeters thick. Uh, it will increase slightly, uh, which uh, may increase the acidity as the needles decompose and break down. With the increase in uh, needle litter on the floor and the possibility of, and good possibility of thunder and lightning storms in this part of the world uh, during the summertime, uh, we would expect that we may get some major fires come through here. So we have increased fuel loads. In fact, the trees are dead and we have uh, a heavy fuel load on the far forest floor. So if fires do come through these stands, they're going to re uh, kill everything. We may lose the forest floor itself. Uh, we've seen this in other areas of the province and big fires in 2003, where it's taken not only the forest floor off, but actually taken the A horizon off right down to the B. So if we lose the forest floor and our A's, we can lose our nutrient base for future regeneration. Mm -hmm. And this could set the whole scene back to a cereal stage where we got cereal plants coming in. It's gonna take a long time to replace our forest. So that's one of the biggest concerns. The other concern is that uh, we could have wind throw in here if the stands don't burn. The pine are known to be, snap off and break down. And so we could get soil perturbation happening or they could just break down and snap off. And then when we have our snowfalls in the winter time, there's nothing here to hold. There's no vegetation to hold the, the, the soil or the moisture from the snow melt. So we could get rapid snow melts in some of these areas, especially if fire has gone through and rapid snow melts in the springtime. And we could also increase our erosion potential in some of these areas on steeper slopes. So uh, uh, as we speak, uh, we are, have a large concern about a flood possible in the Fraser uh, River watershed. Uh, might there be some larger scale effects of this, of what you're talking about here? There well could be, especially if we get some very large fires in the interior here and we have large snow packs and we get a rapid melt. If we have a snow pack like we did last year and much more open space uh, in the future, the potential for flood could be even greater than what we're concerned about now. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a, a situation where soils and the vegetation have evolved with fire as a uh, periodic uh, event, but what looks to be happening is that this is all coming in one big, uh, one big event in the near future, possibly. Well, the extent of damage is so extensive. It just it's it's all through the interior here, and there's so much dead timber. And I think if a fire did get in here, they'd be very difficult to control. Mm. And that's the biggest concern. These fires, I think, are going to be much larger than we've experienced in the past. Uh, on this particular site, there are going to be some changes in the, in the water regime here. You want to give us just a few thoughts on that? Well, the first thing, um, if this, the, the trees stay here and the understory vegetation stays, uh, then there shouldn't be a whole lot of change in the water regime, especially when we have snow melt. But I think the big concern that we have to worry about is the fact that if a big fire comes through here, and that, that potential is extremely high. And if that happens and the understory vegetation is destroyed and the uh, forest floor is destroyed, we could have rapid runoff with spring snow melt. So the moisture will not be staying in the forest, seeping into the, mm -hmm. into the forest floor. So, so what might be the effects on the, on the site then if that happens? We're kind of on a bit of a slope here. Well, we're going to have rapid runoff, plus we could increase our erosion potential. Mm. Uh, in the fires of 2003 in Kamloops, I witnessed where the forest floor was burned off, the AH horizon was burned off right down to the B. So we're mm -hmm. losing our whole nutrient base and that's going to set us back in terms of, of revegetation these sites. Mm -hmm. The other thing that may happen downstream is, is flooding possibilities. And the other thing we have to worry about, I think, is that towns and small communities need to fire protect themselves. Because mm. in these environments here where we have small communities, if they don't protect themselves, those communities will be lost. Right. That's a, that's a good example, I guess, of what some people call adaptive management. And, uh, 
perhaps we can look to some of the First Nations uh, practices of the past where they actually burned fire breaks around villages and so on to, to do that. So I think some of that will be needed. Can you think of any other uh, examples of adaptive management that, that we may have to uh, pursue? Well, we may want to have to build up uh, our dike systems a little bit in here, especially when in the interior here we have a lot of these uh, clay textured soils that aren't going to hold the moisture and uh, we could get, again, rapid runoff. So uh, may, maybe protecting the communities from, from flooding and, and fire breaks around them. Uh, maybe a proactive way of dealing with this rather than reacting when a fire or a flood happens. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think governments need to be thinking ahead in the future, the same as communities. As for what happens when the forest industry, I think will probably collapse here in the interior. Um, how do these communities adapt to that? Uh, do they go into tourism? Do they find some other way to, to uh, make a living? Or are these communities just going to sort of disappear for a while? So the, uh, the change in the ecosystem and, and eventually change in soils are going to create a um, fairly dramatic impact on uh, human uh, settlements, on, on humans in, in the local communities in British Columbia. And it's going to be a challenge for uh, us as a people and our governments to, uh, to deal with this in a way to minimize that impact. Oh yes, I think so. And I don't think anybody really knows at this point in time what's going to happen in the next few years as these forests uh, uh, completely die out for the most part mm -hmm. and uh, what happens when there's no more wood to be harvested nobody I think has really thought ahead and mm -hmm. I mean that question is being asked by many many people but I don't think anybody's come up with a, a mm -hmm. solid answer yet and I think humans being as inventive and as, as da adaptive as we are I'm sure we'll find some way to <laughs> to, to work our way Good through this. Good <laughs> optimistic uh, way to end, end yeah. this. Yeah. yeah.